Alright, I am back with another video and this is my first Halloween themed build for the month of October, the Slasher. This is a build that is going to try and replicate the feeling of playing as one of those iconic horror slasher villains. Uh, your Mike Myers, your uh, Jason Voorhees, your Freddy Kruegers, all that type of stuff. So, let's get into the build. We're going to be starting off as a rogue. This is going to get a sneak attack. Uh, this is going to be extremely important to the build, as you'll see later. The theme I'm kind of going for with this build is this, there's this incredibly dangerous killer that seems to show up out of nowhere when nobody's looking and immediately kills someone before moving on to his next target, kind of like you see in those slasher vill villain films, where they seemingly seem to appear out of nowhere and move at incredible speeds when no one is looking. We're going to be able to accomplish that, or at least get started on it, with Sneak Attack to start. Uh, your stats are going to want to look something like this. We're looking at a 17 in Dexterity, a 15 in Constitution, and a 16 in Charisma. The Charisma stat is going to be important in a minute. Uh, but for now, yes, we have two odd number stats, but, we, but your first ability score improvement is going to go towards bumping these two up to even numbers. So you're definitely going to want to have these stats being at your starters. As for your proficiencies, this can be quite important as a rogue and as a human. This is a human kind of character, but this is not. This is uh, optional. You're going to want to be getting a few important proficiencies and, um, well, yeah, expertise. Uh, so first of all, you're going to definitely want stealth. Absolutely, stealth expertise is the most important thing here, as it's going to be incredibly important to the strategy for you to be able to get one enemy off guard and do tons of damage with sneak attack and a few extra features we're going to be seeing in a minute. Uh, as for your other things, you're definitely going to want to grab probably intimidation, uh, either from rogue or from human, whatever. Uh, I feel like uh, there's, def there's definitely a few more. De Sleight of hand would be a good one to have here for sure. Uh, probably deception as well, just for the sake of roleplay. Because I'm as much as I'm doing this as a slasher build, this is also going to kind of be like a dark urge kind of lore build. Like this, uh, s like the ball spawn that is incredibly effective at killing and like kind of. And like kind of hide, hides within society and like shifts around and hides their identity in order to be able to move around stuff like that uh so deception and intimidation are good skills to have there in fact i'm going to put one of my expertise in intimidation and lastly the final skill can be whatever you want yeah, but moving on all right we're going to be in level two rogue now which means we're going to be getting our bonus action uh hide dash and disengage. These are going to be super, super important for your mobility to get around the battlefield. Next up is our Rogue Level 3, and we're going with a bit of an interesting choice here. I've never really looked into this subclass much until I wanted to do this build, so we're going to be going with the Assassin. Now, this is actually going to be extremely important to our playstyle for this specific feature, or two specific features, I suppose. Um... Any successful attack roll against a surprised creature is a critical hit. So that first uh, attack you're going to be getting right at the start of combat is always going to be a crit, and that is going to help trigger some other abilities that we're going to be getting later. So you're definitely going to want to be able to um, get this ability as early as possible. Also, you're also going to you're also going to have advantage against attack rolls on attack rolls against creatures that have not taken a turn yet. This can also be really powerful because advantage means a higher chance to crit as well. And you also gain the ability to restore your action and bonus action at the start of combat. Uh, I've never really seen this come up, but it might have some uses. At level 4, we're going to be getting our first ability score improvement, and we're definitely going to be grabbing it because we want Dexterity and Constitution to be up. This is going to increase our overall damage, and this is going to increase our HP. Because the whole point of these slasher killers is that even if you're in a direct confrontation with them, they are very, very resilient to damage, so you definitely want to get your Constitution up high. At Rogue Level 5, we're going to be getting Uncanny Dodge. This means that when an attack hits you, you only take half the usual damage. Uh, yeah, basically, this means you're going to be even more tanky, being able to take a lot more hits than normal. Uh, helps get into that resilient kind of aspect. Next up at Rogue Level 6, we're going to be getting an 
Uh, some skill expertise, or some extra skills, I guess. It's supposed to be expertise, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, these are expertise, my, my mistake. So you can get sleight of hand here, deception, whatever you like. Just pick your favorite here. And then our final level of rogue is going to be rogue level 7, so we can get evasion. This is going to let us um, take no damage if we succeed dexterity saving throws from certain spells. This can be quite powerful and helps to be keep you, um, well, tanky, I guess. All right, we're going to be leaving rogue now, and we're going to be jumping over to warlock. Now, there's going to be quite a few things we're going to be able to get from Warlock, and you'll see what I mean, but it's most importantly comes from our subclass, the Great Old One, and our subclass feature. When you land a critical hit against a creature, that creature and any nearby enemies must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened until the end of their next turn. Of course, when, you know, these slasher vill villains murder someone, it, it stokes fear in those around them and causes everyone to start running. And I feel like this is going to be a really fun little aspect of this build. Sneak up on an enemy, get a guaranteed critical hit, most likely killing most basic enemies, and then all the others run away in fear. That is a slasher in a nutshell. Uh, as for your cantrips, you can take whatever you like here. Friends for advantage on those charisma checks is always nice. And Eldritch Blast is always a solid option, since we're mainly going to be focusing on up quarters combat, but if you in close quarters combat. But if they're arranged targets, you definitely want to be able to have something to get them with. As for your spells, Dissonant Whispers is a great spell. It does psychic damage and it's going to frighten creatures. Basically, we're going for the magic aspect of this build to be based on fear. And you can take whatever else you like. Tasha's Hideous Laughter if you want to mess with people's heads a bit more. Armor of Agathis if you want some more tankiness. Arms of Hadar if you want to go into more of that eldritch patron aspect. Maybe having Baal as your patron is quite an interesting idea. I'm going to go with Hex, because it's going to allow us to do additional damage at the cost of our concentration. But, And it also is going to inflict disadvantage on ability on an ability check of your choosing. So I feel like make giving a an enemy disadvantage on wisdom saving throws, and then going for, fi for the fear effect will definitely be a powerful combo. Next up at Warlock level 2, uh, we're going to be getting some Elfridge Invocations here. If you want to, there's a few options you can grab. I mean, Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast are great if you want to buff up your uh, Eldritch Blasts. Uh, you could also go for Devil's Sight here if you want to play around with perhaps the Darkness spell in some shape or form. Maybe you go Shadow Monk for this build. Uh, that could work, or maybe you just take Darkness another way. Definitely, definitely could pick this up, because apparently this does work. I was misinformed uh, with some of my previous builds, but uh, yeah, you could go with that. You can also go for Fiendish Vigor if you want some more HP. However, for uh, lore purposes, we're going to go with the Mask of Many Faces to get the Disguise Self spell. Uh, what this is going to kind of do for us lore-wise is that this psychopathic killer obviously would eventually become recognizable, so they're able to magically disguise themselves to move through Baldur's Gate unseen. Uh, this is quite fun for lore, and also we're, we can also take Agonizing Blast here to be able to um, buff up our Eldritch Blast damage. We're also going to be getting another spell at this level. Take whatever you like. You can go for Charm Person, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. These are all on theme. I quite like them. I'm going to take Armor of Agathist to bump up our tankiness and also deal cold damage to anyone who attacks us. At Warlock level 3, we're going to be getting our Pact Boon, and this is going to be quite important. We're going to be taking Pact of the, of the Blade. Uh, this is going to allow us to basically bind our Pact weapon, although at this point our Charisma is lower than our Dexterity, so it's probably not going to be the best idea to do this. Um, but we do get packed to the blade to also gain these other weapons as well if we want, but we're going to be mainly here for another feature we're going to get later. Uh, but, to, but here we are, we have some level 2 spells now, and you've got a few options here. Uh, you could take Enthrall to make a creature so fearful of you that they can't take their eyes off you. A Hold Person is probably going to be the best option to pick here. It is going to let you use your concentration to hold an enemy in place and attacks against them are always critical hits, so that is going to play into the fear aspect, definitely probably the spell you want to go for, but Misty Step to be able to teleport around and get get to your victims close quicker is very, very good. Uh, the Darkness spell can be obtained here if you wanted to go for that Devil Sight Darkness combo. Crown of Madness if you want to make your enemies so afraid of you they go insane. Definitely a few cool options here, but Whole Person is definitely going to be the one that plays into our strategy the most. 
at Warlock 4, you're going to be getting your another feat. Uh, you can do whatever you like with this one. It's not going to be too critical to the overall build. Uh, if you wanted to pump your dexterity up to the max, you can. If you wanted to pump your constitution up to 18, you can. You could grab the tough feat. Uh, if you wanted to get advantage on constitution saving throws for your spells, you could go for um, a Warcaster. That could be quite good if you want to keep up those fear effects. There's a few different things you can do with this. Uh, I'm personally just going to pop an ability score improvement into my uh, constitution to be able to get this even higher. Uh, well, for cantrips, you can take whatever you like. I quite like Bone Chill. It's just a spectral, spectral ghostly hand that does necrotic damage. It just feels a bit spooky. Uh, we're going to get another level 2 spell here. I'm probably going to take Misty Step just because it is one of the more useful spells in the game. However, if you feel like something like Phantasmal Force might be a bit more on brand, or like I said, Enthrall or Charm Person, or maybe even Ray of Enfeeblement, uh, that could also work. With Warlock level 5, we're going to be getting our Deepened Pact feature, which means as a Pact of the Blade, we're going to be getting extra attack. Now, obviously getting extra attack at level 12 sucks, but this is not really meant to be a frontline fighter. It is meant to be a stealthy sneak attack killer that inflicts fear effects, not necessarily needing to do multiple attacks, but doing massive damage on a single one. However, if you feel like you would rather play a more tanky frontline focused fighter, go with the Warlock levels first, maybe drop a level of Rogue and go to level 6 Warlock maybe to get some extra stuff, and then go for the Assassin Rogue after that. But play around with it, see what you like. Uh, maybe you can even throw a Gloomstalker Ranger level in here, but I'm just trying to show off how you can get a ton of critical hits and also induce fear in your enemies when you do so. This is more of a thematic build, less about balancing and more about just overall uh, concept and feeling and theme less about actually playing the character this is something maybe more that you would maybe respec into at a higher level just to have some fun not necessarily something you could play through the whole game with maybe although you absolutely could with this build uh at this level we're going to be grabbing the fear spell you could grab hypnotic pattern or whatever else you'd like but fear is obviously most on theme for us just bugger all the critical hit stuff just immediately grab this and get fear on a bunch of different creatures definitely worth picking up uh, we can also grab Maya the Mind as an Eldritch Invocation here to give us the slow spell if we want to make it so our targets can't run away. Uh, you could also grow, grab Sign of Ill Omen to, to specifically pick out a character that you are obsessed with and kill them. There's a whole bunch of options here. So that is the build. Uh, as I said before, you can definitely mix and match these. Why is Withers... Are you good, my dude? As I was saying, you can definitely mix and match these levels if you, depending on what you want. If you prefer to be the sneaky rogue type that sneaks up on enemies and kills one pretty much instantly, go with the rogue levels first. If you want to uh, be more of a frontline fighter and a spellcaster first, go for the warlock levels first. Interchange things. Maybe you, as soon as you get to level three of uh, rogue and get the assassin feature, immediately get a level one. Uh, warlock level to get that frightening feature and then go the rest of the way whichever you like there's so many options here do whatever you want uh but regardless let's get into the equipment obviously for our face mask we have got the dark justicia mask this is going to give us that kind of slasher serial killer look in the vein of mike myers and jason uh definitely essential for the theming of this build however obviously its effect is a bit subpar you only get a plus one to intim intimidation so if you don't mind losing a little bit of the like just the mask on itself look later on in the game you can get the dark justicia helmet which does have the mask but it's attached to a helmet and in my personal opinion looks a little bit lame also we're not proficient with medium armor so this might not work but you could definitely maybe if you started warlock you could get this but it's whatever. Uh, basically, this would give you an extra chance to crit as well uh, while obscured. But honestly, I for the theme here, I would just stick with the, um, the Dark Justicia mask. I don't have a cloak on this build purely for fashion, but if you wanted to put a cloak on this build for Deathstalker Mantle from the Dark Urge playthrough, which is what I'm assuming you would play this build on, uh, can allow you to, once you kill an enemy, turn invisible. This is an extremely powerful effect. And in fact, how about we just do a quick little experiment here. If I open up my die vase here and we go to uh, Harlequin Black and White. Color this real quick. Yeah, that works. That works. That's okay. 
I would personally not have it for fashion wise, but if you color it right, it does look pretty good. Uh, obviously, we're going to be taking the ballist armor here. We are going to be using piercing weapons such as daggers and short swords to kind of mimic, uh, you know, slasher type weapons. So we are definitely going to. Well, it's weird. A piercing weapon on a slasher build. Yeah, you you get the point. Um, but this is obviously going to give us um, the ability to inflict vulnerable on our enemies and make them vulnerable to piercing damage, which means they're going to be taking double damage from our piercing. So critical hits, double damage, massive, massive damage. Obviously, this can only be obtained in Act 3, uh, but you can obtain it quite early in Act 3 if you know what to look. Uh, so definitely want to pick this up at some point. Uh, but up until then, you could use something like the Studded Lover Plus 1, which you get from an Act 1 quest, for example. Uh, or just any sort of kind of light armor you can find early on in the game. There's, just play through the game and use your own judgment until you get to this. Also in Act 3, from the same vendor you'll grab the armor from, you can get the Ballist Gloves. This just gives us attack plus 1, which is a plus 1 to our damage and attack rolls. Also, it's going to give us the unique feature Garrot. Um, this allows us to wrap a shadow rope around a humanoid's throat and start garroting it. Basically, what garroting does is the effective enemy is being strangled by a garrot. It is silenced and takes 3 to 18 bludgeoning damage per turn. If the entity and the garrota move more than 5 minute meters apart, this condition ends. But it does. I believe this does also slow down your enemies and prevent them from being able to get away from you as quickly. So it's just a nice little feature to be able to kind of fit on theme. However, if you're not too into this, there are other options like the gloves of dexterity. If you'd want to maybe put the, your other points other than dex into somewhere else. Uh, but I feel like this was on theme, and I felt like it was just nice to include and show off. Uh, next up we have our boots, the Disintegrating Nightwalkers. You did not see us a weird edit a minute ago, I promise. Uh, these are going to allow you to uh, basically be an unstoppable force. You cannot be in webbed, entangled, or ensnared, and cannot slip on grease or ice. No difficult terrain is going to affect you here. You can just uh, go for your opponents no matter what. They can't throw bookcases in front of you, they can't uh try and close doors you will get to them uh this is also going to give you misty step which is our which is another little bit of teleportation once per short rest nice extra ability to have uh moving on to the amulet here we've got the spectator's eyes this can be obtained in act one by defeating a secret boss and it's going to give you access to two unique spells once per long rest the first is ray of fear which frightens your targets if, unless they succeed a wisdom saving throw it's just another way of inflicting fear and then Wounding Ray, which is going to deal 2, two to 16 necrotic damage. Another little thing to get. It's just an extra little bonus that fits on theme and is quite fun. Uh, next up is the Ring of Free Action. Mixing these with the Disintegrating Nightwalkers means no matter what, you cannot be stopped. Uh, you will reach your target no matter what they try to do. And you are an unstoppable force. Next up is the Killer's Sweetheart. This is a ring that can be obtained in Act 2. When you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical hit. Once spent, this effect refreshes after a long rest. So, at the start of combat after a long rest, you do your critical, your guaranteed critical hit from the Assassin Rogue, kill somebody, and then your next um, attack roll will be a critical hit as well. Spreading fear and getting rid of two enemies at the start of combat really quickly. Our weapon is the Knife of the Undermounting King. Obviously, the most thematically appropriate thing would be a dagger, but unfortunately, daggers do not scale well into the later game. However, there is a dagger called the Dollar Amurus, I feel, I rem if I remember correctly, that can be obtained in Act 3, which, when you deal a critical hit, it does an additional 7 damage. So that is an option. However, this is a weapon that can be obtained quite fairly easily in Act 2. Uh, when the wielder scores a critical hit, they or the wielder can score a critical hit on a 19, uh, when they roll two damage or less, you re-roll the die, taking the highest result. This is going to allow your damage to be consistently high. Pairing this with the ballist, um, with the ballist armor is a very, very deadly combination. Also, Shadow Blade. You have advantage on attack rolls against lightly or heavily obscured targets while using this blade. So, for example, if you went the darkness route, uh, you could, um, you could basically combine darkness with this and be able to gain advantage on a lot of hits. Stacking this with the assassin features that also give you critical hits and advantage on attack rolls, you're going to be getting a lot of high damage rolls off with this weapon. Uh, I also have the Dark Fire Short Bow here that's going to allow you to cast haste on yourself if you want. It also grants you resistance to fire and cold damage, allowing you to be just that a bit more tanky. This is easy to obtain in Act 2 and is a staple on a lot of my builds. Uh, so yeah, I think that is the build. Uh, sorry, things are a little bit all over this, all over the place. Uh, I don't have much time to record today, and I had a big issue with Baldur's Gate 3 kind of just deciding that 90% of my mods don't work anymore. 
uh, for no apparent reason, which is why the camera looks a bit different compared to my other videos, because the camera mod I use no longer works for some reason. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think this build definitely encapsulates the idea of being this unstoppable slash of force that, inv that invokes dread in their enemies. Being able to appear out of nowhere, instantly killing a target pretty much, and then suddenly being able to inv attack others while they're trying to run away in fear for huge amounts of damage is such a fun concept that is fun to play around with. Like I said, as far as the levels go, play around with Rogue and uh, Warlock levels interchangeably to get something that you feel comfortable with as you progress through the game, but Otherwise, this build is mainly just meant to be more on theme and fun to mess around with. Uh, definitely something good, I think, for a Dark Urge playthrough as well. So, with that, I think that's going to be all from me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, for the rest of the month of, of October, I'm going to be re releasing a Halloween-themed build like this uh, every weekend, uh, with regular build requests and other builds kind of interspersed throughout the week. But... Yeah, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.